Let's see something. All right. Can they hear us? Can you hear us? Hello. Al, are you on? Hello, Al. Yep, I can hear you. Yep, I can hear you. Ebby? Can you hear us, Ebby? That's working on the door. <laughs> okay. Call a meeting to order. Um, do, do, one, two, three, 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 call. Looks like we got a full permission. So. All well, right. Uh, so point at the Warren now is this. Uh, we have Warren is joining the commission which is nice warren Baithke. Baithke. thank you for your pronunciation welcome and thank you so we'll call it to order audience of citizens uh, we, we think you would uh, recognize sebi senya because uh, we lot. recognize sebi senya who has an application in for the other alternate spot and he is online with the Zoom, so he will be filling in the last position. All right. And then audience of citizens, we don't have any. Approval of minutes. <coughs> Who is here? And who's got him in? Who read him? Approval of minutes. Second. Okay. Second. Uh, moved by William, second by Nick. All those in favor, aye. Am I? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay, else did I? Okay. Contrary minds. All right, approved. Thank you. You read, read the minutes, Warren? Pardon me? Did you read the minutes? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. So, okay. Cool. All right. <laughs> 4.1, I had already done that. Uh, no, I, I, I'd like to introduce Warren a bit. Uh, oh, you can give him the background, though. Yeah, I'll give you a little background. Uh, you know. work, we worked with Warren on a couple of projects. I will obviously the mining project was a big one down at the Really? I came at the very end of that one. For the oh. one to, uh, that went to the uh, pumping station of the Berlin Turnpike, it was a 36 inch, 42 oh, inch. Uh, uh, working with Cardinal Engineering at the time. And I. Uh, the second project we did was Belcher Brook. So we reminded me of that. But, uh, Warren has been an excellent engineer, uh, from my know. Uh, been very efficient, effective, and worked very closely with the health department and the DEP primarily in this case. Um, and I found him being a very, very experienced and really knowledgeable. So it's a pleasure working with him, and I welcome him uh, to the board. Now. Thank you. I don't know, Warren, if you want to give anybody a little bit of your background uh, at this point in time. Well, I graduated from UConn. And I spent quite a well, few that's years. That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> well, in various firms throughout the, the state. Uh, I spent some time in Texas. Uh, that's my home state. We moved back for a while. Came back here because my wife was from here and was one of the others, so she won out. And so I've been here since 1987. And working in Wanda with Cardinal Engineering, who I uh, used to be with UIC, United International Corporation. And we worked with Cardinal because we had most of the work between the two firms in Middletown. Uh, and so I got to work in Berlin and work with Ray and uh, all the people here at the, at the town hall. And it was uh, very interesting and a lot of fun. So here I am now retired since 2020 and Ray talked me into Twisted you around a little bit. Well, you didn't really twist it that way. That's good. So here I am. Well, uh, and, and uh, Mike and I have talked with Mike Alperna and I have talked about the talk to something else too. And probably looking at some projects that they might be interested in. We might want well to be able to work with you on that if we could. Kind of so we'll talk about that. Yeah, we've got tons of that. Time. Yeah. So uh, again, welcome <laughs> board. And um, Thank you. next item on there is a Nevada Bassett District meeting. Um, Liam was actually physically there, so uh, and, and he has the minutes. But let me pass out the minutes close uh, quickly to you and explain a little bit about what happened here and the purpose of the meeting. Um, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll give you a copy also. Yeah. I didn't print them. I got it. it. Was actually you have it also? He just gave oh, it. I forgot you were on, you were right there also. I, I was there. I got it. Um, I got it on an email. I was reading it, but I didn't yeah. uh, print it. 
just wanted to go over it's a, a, a art simonian has been trying to put this together for a good portion of a year if not more longer uh, the whole idea the intent here was to try to get the regulators in here with the district um, and Liam knows firsthand because he's our representative of at least the town's representative not just our personal representative to, to the uh, to the board for the uh, Madabasset district uh, there's two other members, John Dunham uh, and also um, Jimmy Fallon uh, currently. And then, um, so the meeting was sponsored by the Madabasset district and it finally got representation by both districts, Kensington and Worthington, in addition to myself uh, and Liam being near as well. Well, basically, the, oh, uh, and Charlie Vanessa from the town uh, council and also Donna Beach, who represented the Town Council as well as state representative with Town of Rolling. So anyway, the idea here was just to come up with some uh, suggestions and ideas because uh, Berlin, uh collectively, the three districts, including ourselves, have been um, earmarked as having a serious INI problem. And as a result of that, uh, that's one of the reasons we see uh, that Metabasset District has had not been given an NPDES permit. Uh, Deep made it fairly clear at the time that they were not issuing a permit because they, they wanted some additional commitments to be made in terms of INI uh, reduction. Um, and we'll get into some of the concerns that we personally have. But anyway, that was the whole intent is to sit down with everybody and uh, discuss the issue of what can be done. Um, we've been highlighted several times between the town of Berlin, New Britain, uh, and Cromwell. Uh, in Middletown now that we've joined them with the uh, bold as well. Um, everybody's looking at us and saying that our INI is significantly higher than it should be for a small little town as, as ours. So uh, more to come. Uh, EPA was there. Uh, he was a very, fairly new fellow, so he hasn't got much of a background on this. Deke was represented by about four or five people. You notice some of the names there of uh, Warren, uh, particularly. No, uh, yeah, Yvonne, and then also uh, uh, Catherine Chu, who she did, yes. you know, did a lot of work with on, on that. They were the two that spoke the most. Yeah, and Carlos, I don't know if Carlos mentioned that. I don't know you know Carlos. Know but, Carlos. Yeah, so uh, basically, um, Elliot Anderson is a new, newcomer on the ETA scene. He replaced uh, Jack Melcher. Uh, um, so anyway, more to come on this. Uh, the outcome of that was that a couple of the districts were saying that they wanted more, more quarterly meetings. I'm not really sure how that's going to help us any, but anyway, uh, that's one of the things. So there'll be a follow-up. Uh, one thing that was interesting in this meeting and, uh, uh, it was that of all the utilities, uh, actually all the towns contributing, um, Cromwell was the tightest. Unbelievable. There, uh, the information coming out from Cromwell is a very tight sewer system, which I was really impressed with and surprised actually. Um, kind of envious to a certain degree as well. So, but that was not, the. Not only, in, in, in my opinion, then, both that and um, the way New Britain was reducing their NIA. Yes, that was, was a good, another good point. Um, kind of they had a substantial reduction, and here's where the problem lies with us because. We sustained a 12.65% increase last year, and, and likely it's going to be the same this year, unfortunately, Four. because there's been the reduction. Um, actually, um, we had going. a 0.3%, and everybody else, uh, including Middletown and um, Middletown and Cromwell, Cromwell is even less, uh, and MDC is true, it was very uh, low, was in, in the, in the uh, low numbers, 2 or 3%. So we sustained 13, almost 13%. So we're paying last year's was two point almost well two point seven million, so likely it'll go another three hundred thousand. So we'll be paying up to three million dollars to Meta Bassett for the their wastewater treatment plant to be divided by the three utilities in, in Berlin. Um, and the way that it was kind of confusing up until Art showed how the pie was divided up. You got these five districts. Everybody has committed to pay so much for that piece of pie, and that covers the overhead of the plant. Well, here's the thing: you got people like Cromwell that have taken this piece of pie, and 
they're committed to pay for that piece of pie. Maybe it's 10%. Well, they're in 4%. So they're screaming because they got to pay that amount for that pie, no matter what. And then for Berlin, we've got a piece of that pie. And then they hit us with 12 to almost 13% above that. So, and they're screaming at us. The other districts are getting mad at us. New Britain, they got an excuse. They got a $90 million grant, or they put together 90 million. And they already saw a million dollars worth of savings this last year. Million dollars. Yeah, I heard they just awarded a huge loss. No, I've, I've, I, I'm not really sure, but they're I they're nine into their 13 years. Yeah, it's a 13 year plan. Okay. They're in the ninth. Uh, they're they're just starting to do the uh, out of the 13 year plan. I think the, they're they're. It was a significant ago. reduction, and I yeah. think it was. Uh, they were surprised, and they were only doing laterals, so they look to get a lot more efficient. But the point here is is that Berlin, and we'll get into more detail with the with the executive session. Yeah, um, there's a few things we could say we can't say right now. Anyway, um, 4.3 Baxter Avenue. Um, Jim and I, Jim Horrible and I, and uh, Mike Hearn uh, met, uh, well, not met, we really had a discussion with our attorney, uh, Jeff D'Onofrio. Um, Jeff has spent a good portion of his last month working on, uh, he's a regional water authority a, attorney that does the, uh, the um, uh, consumer advocation portion of it and is very familiar with uh, the whole process at the regional water authority has been there for quite a while um, they're looking at acquiring aquarium so he's been spending a lot of time on that whole issue so we got him to uh, sit down one of the things I want to do is since we got the Baxter Avenue meter set up and functioning we uh, yeah, we, we had it's hopefully accurate uh, right we spent money with right peers to, to evaluate the Baxter Avenue meter is off of Baxter Avenue, as, it, as it's reflected. Basically, picks up all of Kensington Fire District, about 95% of the flow. The remaining portion is a small percentage over here, the, the industrial park over by Willowbrook, Willowbrook, which is not far from the uh, discharge. Here used to be the discharge uh, brook for the uh, New Britain water, uh, New Britain systems. Anyway, so the point of it is that we're seeing high and we, we kind of suspected it would be high I and I coming from Kensington. So so we're looking at that in the old agreement, 2012, I don't know if you recall, Warren, basically uh, it was set up, I'm almost sure that the agreement was set up as a result of DEP wanting the three districts to apportion the, 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 the I and I going up that they were going to be doing to the Berlin treatment facility, up to Berlin pump station. So they, they apportioned that. Uh, from what I gather, that's the way I, I, I understood it. And so so what, what we've been doing since then is using that uh, formula that Art came up with, which is very complicated, and we've done simplification a couple of times, but simplifying it, what, what we did is look at water sold by the three districts and then just came up with the proportion and then used that proportion to, to divvy up the, uh, the bill from the invoice from uh, basically Matabasa. So, so it isn't realistic because it really doesn't take the I and I. So, when talking with the attorney, the attorney said, "I need to put the paper together, uh, and one of the things I need to do is get a conceptual agreement from you, from the board here, that that would be the way to approach it, to to take that, the flow coming out of here, and using that as the perspective percentage coming out of Kensington, because Use that it, as a base. if do you want me to finish? You're gonna finish. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, that, you use that information instead of the consumption of water sold. So that would be water sold plus I and I. So this would be really subtracting out their whole proportion in there, putting that into the uh, put, putting it into the formula, and then uh, what do you call it? Evaluating the cost of the uh, of the Matabasset invoice that way. I looked at it very quickly. This would mean probably an extra three or four hundred thousand dollars goes to Kensington to pay for there, and ours gets subtracted out a little bit, and then um, Worthington's gets subtracted out a little bit as a result of that. The other problem to this is Worthington, although they did a study back in 2021 and 2020, 
they don't have the data. They claim they don't have the data, but we do know that some of the studies that we did, uh, they have a, a high flow over by Middletown Road and a very high flow at Webster Height. Uh, both of those areas have high contributions, let alone the work that you did in Cardinal in showing some of this work over here at Valley Drive, an area that uh, also, uh, I think there's a few laterals in there that are leaking very heavily. Um, so, but at least we would have Kensington under under um, a, a particular evaluation, and we could use now the Baxter Avenue meter as as a good meter device. Um, and it's been showing flow sometimes up to three or four or five million gallons per day, uh, and their daily average consumption is seven hundred thousand gallons per day. So, it, and it pretty much rides uh, the, the precipitation. The precipitation is high, then the flow into it is high. So it's pretty much relates to that. So what I'm looking for today is um, a conceptual agreement that that would be the way to go. Uh, and then I need to put the paper together to, to basically present to the town council for their approval as well. Uh, that's what the uh, attorney outlined for me. So I'm looking for a vote of approval to go conceptually with using the Baxter Avenue media data, data for, for the uh, terminated termination of the invoice for Metabas for Kensington Fire District next year. That would be for the for the 2024 data. So um, I'm looking for a looking for a motion and then uh looking for a motion you said as conceptual the motion is is to use the Baxter Avenue uh, meter as a means of billing uh, for the uh, Berlin Water District for other for uh, means of billing, right? For whoever district, it's a means of billing. Well, in this case, it comes from Kensington because it's the United well, it's for the uh, Matabasset invoice, the annual invoice against the Matabasset yeah. invoice. And as I said, it's going to be close to three million dollars this year. So uh, actually, next year, next July, it's due uh, Matabasset. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion. A motion. Uh, Liam made the motion. Yeah. Second. Second. I'll second it. Al, okay, Al thank you, it. Al. All those in favor, I. Right. Discussion. Right. Any discussion. further discussion? Any, any questions any about questions this? For... Pardon me? Any other questions for Greg? You don't have any questions, sir. Well, this was the area that. They were supposed to have done a lot of I and I work in. Correct. I I supposed is is a good word. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't do it. No. They backed down. Exactly. And that's what I am hoping. They to blame do. it upon lack of funds or something. I yeah. Guess. Oh, there's other areas that you just recently no, we're kind of working around. Anyway, there's, there's a couple of things we can bring up in the executive session. We can talk about it but, uh, in uh, more detail. Uh, but you're correct. That was one of the things they reneged on. So. You have a good meter yeah, thing to use. Well, yeah, see that meter was kind of interesting is and I didn't know myself, Warren. This is one of those things where the, uh, technically um, three calibration companies came in and basically didn't recognize it. Uh, Palmer bolus flume, which is an acceptable flume to be used. Mm -hmm. However, the insert is treated differently than if you brought, put the Palmer bolus flume in place, you built it in place. And then who was to know? Uh, so uh, it turns out that when we were originally measuring it, we were measuring it one foot off. It had to be, had to, we drilled a hole back into the 24-inch uh, line, and we put the transducer in there to make the thing, and then we checked on the flows with another flow meter. And uh, it's still high, uh, but not as high as it originally was high. It was really probably about 40% higher than before, so uh, it did make a difference. And we've actually had that uh, meter pit flood a couple times so that the entire meter would uh, flood, up, uh, flood over. So at that point, you were getting either a six to eight million gallon uh, per day flow out I of there. I thought the meter maxed out yeah. at six, but if you flooded it, the meter, the, the, the meter like eight. The meter uh, maxes out at six, but the, but the actual pipe maxes out at eight. So yeah. if, if the pit's flooded at eight, it's I mean. maxed out. Yeah, it's maxed out. So it'd be eight now. We can't measure it because yeah. it's, it's just a six. But in that meter, just just on record, we had adjusted three times. Finally, that they they got it right. They had to move it a foot farther back and over in order to get the correct flow. The last time, 
because the first two times they well the first we location getting, it was in fact it was not correct yeah so it is certified and so it was is, a learning event and unfortunately it's one of those things that you know you have to know a lot of detail in order to pick that up on something like that will it be recalibrated yeah uh, we've already had it recalibrated back in um april and uh yeah annually is that what you were requesting have your meters you have a I don't know, it's standard practice or something yes yeah. yeah. that, that's what we've been doing annually for the matabasa one yes right. okay a motion uh so moved in discussion no okay all in favor aye, aye. contrary minds okay right. so it's passed thank you okay now the next so item is uh, this is a water issue uh UCMR is a, a mechanism that the EPA uses, and this is UCMR5. So there's already been four prior to this. They use this mechanism to to test out the water, so to speak, in terms of saying what kind of uh, quality issues out there. Since we're under uh, 10,000 population, uh, our uh, sample collection was done free of charge. All we had to do is collect the samples. So basically. The, this time around, the UCMR5 collected and tested for 29 PFAS components and one um, lithium component, uh, which is interesting. So we've had tests done um, with Cromwell because we purchased water from Cromwell. Obviously, New Britain says we purchase water from New Britain on a regular basis in Elden Road. I'm happy to report that the last, uh, last set of sampled results came back satisfactory. So this is the second group of samples that we've had. These were tested back in July of 8, uh, 2024. So all of, all the components were below detection limits. Now these, uh, just for verification warrant, are parts per trillion. The standards now are four parts per trillion, and these are all measured at less than that. So, uh, it's it's been, it is. It is unheard of. I, I, two parts per million. I know. When I first started, and I'm sure it's you as well. Uh, parts per million was the typical, and it became parts per billion, and now we're talking about parts, parts per trillion, trillion um, well, which is phenomenal. Even better. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, you know, it's background basically. That's one of the other problems. So the standards are going to be. So we would comply with the potential standard, but it hasn't been adopted as yet. But uh, that was good news anyway. Our second set, um, lead and copper. Uh, we're required by lead, uh, for lead and copper testing for an inventory, uh, according to the most current uh, lead and copper rule, uh, basically the uh, uh, date is October 16th of 2024. Uh, I mentioned this in the previous meeting that we had uh, a month ago. Um, basically, uh, Lisa and uh, Len Zelensky were very helpful in, in putting together information on the DPH template. Template is like it's a spreadsheet that's almost three feet long uh, with all kinds of information um, and it's required to be submitted to the health department. The interesting part about this is that the health department doesn't technically, um, is not the entity with the primacy in this case, EPA is the primacy. Um, out of the 2,900 customers, we have about 458 customers that basically have, um, are unknown. Um, we were lucky enough, and I mean lucky enough in the sense that we're a new company, basically. We were created in 1966 to replace the East Berlin Fire District, which was going defunct at the time. So um, all our, 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 our um, regulations include the fact that any, any connection uh, from 1967 on is with a copper piping. There's no lead, there's no galvanized piping, there's no nothing. So, so we had a pretty good start. So uh, uh, Lisa and I and, and Lenny, and then we also had an intern for, for the summer, evaluated all the home intern, all the homes from 1967 on, we could eliminate as not being any problem because they were connected to copper. And I was able to find the original permit slips for the, I couldn't find one for number one, but I found one for two, three, and four. Apparently, they were certified for some reason, which is also good, because uh, some, 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 uh, another entity evaluated it and approved it, are all connected to copper. So, so we could eliminate those. We could not eliminate any earlier ones, and the, the scenario for that is this. We're going to basically 
uh, send out letters to them. Uh, uh, we check to see uh, EPA is not ready to, uh, excuse me, uh, State Health Department is coming up with a letter format because there's a format required to, to notify the customers, which includes the health issues. And apparently their attorneys are not finished with this and, and you're supposed to send a letter out 30 days after the October 16th uh, deadline. So um, hopefully we'll have it up. Uh, but the scenario that we're planning on doing is this. The 458, we'll send them out notices and we're gonna set up a website uh, through the town where they can reply, they can take pictures, they can reply back to us and let us know what they think they have. And then we try to try to reduce that number to something reasonable. And finally, uh, hopefully by the end of next year or by sometime next year, we'll have that number down to zero or down to something that's a quite, a, quite a bit manageable where our staff might be able to actually go to a couple of homes and figure out what, the, what, the, what it is there. Uh, the whole idea obviously is uh, copper is not so much of a problem as, as lead. Uh, lead and then of it, as a result of lead issues with the Flint, Michigan, that prompted this, all this legislation. There's actually another rule coming out at the same time, lead copper rule improvement, it's an LCRI. And the improvement then has a whole bunch of scenario requirements as well, but those are three years out. So right now I'm not going to worry about that. So anyway, so we I uh, think the total we had was about 458 customers that have unknown. I think is that correct, uh, Lisa? Something in that range. May I ask a question? Sure, These please. customers that they have led in the lateral up to the house, whose responsibility is that? Okay, that'll become that's an interesting point because that's exactly part of the problem with uh, a lot of them. Uh, from the from the curb box to the homeowner, that's the responsibility of the homeowner. From the curb box to the main is our responsibility. Um, by state regulation right now, and you, you, I'm sure you've heard of it as well, the lead goosenecks is considered a lead service line, but technically they're not doing anything with that. And actually the funny part about that is EPA is handling it as a connector. They call it a connector other than anything, <laughs> and not requiring it to be replaced. <laughs> the, the, the requirement here is, is if you come across it, let's say you're doing a main replacement, then you need to replace things, but not, not to go out of your way to do it as a, as a norm. I suspect that, you know, the, the feds being what they do, they're going to come back and someday and tell you, you got to replace that lead goosenick as well, probably. And that's my thought yes, on that. Okay. But right now, uh, so the homeowner would be responsible. It comes up to, to a tricky situation because then um, who pays for it? Uh, some towns are actually uh, like Norwich. Yeah, Norwich uh, is, is paying for it. They're paying for a certain area to replace the lead service line. If they know it's a lead service line, they'll replace it and pay for it. In other places, uh, they don't want to do that. They'll replace, uh, the homeowner can replace the lead inside his home, but the service line then becomes an issue uh, and it's costly. Uh, the feds looked at this and looked at that and said that probably six to $8,000 is a replacement value. And that, you know, that's a generic cost. Obviously, if you've got a, a long service line and, and um, you've got a lot of other uh, things in the way, that, that price tag could be Got a bit more than six or eight thousand dollars. Especially now. homes that are older, they have trees. Oh, for way. sure. Yeah, and <laughs> mature trees too. Mature. That's the other thing too. So that's a problem. Uh, the whole thing is a little funny because on top of that, uh, we just did this past year, uh, and you participated on it. Uh, is the lead service uh, uh, lead service uh, testing? Uh, so we're still required every three years to do lead testing in the distribution system. And what I usually select is this. I have to select what they call tier one, made houses made in a particular year, uh, 82 and on. And then, uh, and then also I, just, I, I do this purposely because I know that uh, our Achilles heel is East Berlin. I actually have a, quite a few more tests in East Berlin. So you're a fairly new system, uh, Beckley Road, so that's not a problem at all. But um, East Berlin system, in my mind's eye, there are homes there that were built in 1720 and 1775. So uh, I suspect there's going to be some kind of a plumbing issue there someplace or other that we'll run into. I don't know about your home over in Kensington. It's a cottage. 
That's the copper sulfur. Okay, so you're all set. It's the best. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's true. And uh, even with that, though, with the testing, and then, uh, and then you know, the purpose of that testing is so, so you basically have water that's stagnant over six hours of standing time. You test it first flush, and what happens, and then uh, I'm going to mention the number of the variation too, of that first flush should be the worst case scenario because it's been in the, in the water for, in, in the piping for a while. And then, uh, and we had all very good results. We only had one, two places that we actually had a, 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 a lead result, but it was so low that it wasn't a big problem. Um, all the others were below detection. So I was pretty happy to see that too. In copper, all below detection. So that wasn't even an issue. Now, in the lead, lead, um, lead rule, one of the modifications that's coming across is that instead of collecting one sample, one liter sample, they're going to require five liter samples. So what you're going to do is you're going to be collecting one, two, three, four, five, and not, and not testing the first one, but testing the fifth one. The idea there is to get it further into the distribution system of the house and potentially water that's put coming out of the lead service line or service line. So that's the theory on that one. Okay, um, 4.6 is the CDM. You're looking at, uh, and there's a lot of uh, material that goes along with this. I've just brought the map in front of me. This is a 1996 study. This was partially used for the first relining, as I mentioned, uh, the lining of the big line, the 42 inch and 36 inch line, which Warren was involved with. It was a, a, a good use of money because that particular area was losing a lot of water uh, and sewer. I'm a little bit disappointed because um, I, I'm not sure, uh, and, and Art's never given me an impact statement based on the fact now that he is an executive director of Madame Asset to see what the differences were. Obviously, uh, if you're plugging up a hole, you've got to be saving something. So uh, that's not, a, uh, you know, in my mind's eye. And Warren, Warren knows also the Belcher Brook one, I think was a, a very good one coming down from Meadow Lane all the way down to the end of Lower Lane. Uh, we did we did that Belcher Brook, and I think that was worthy of it. I, I remember looking at the camera work and seeing some of the some of the leakages occurring there. And then um, Worthington did a minor, uh, well, I should say minor. They did a little bit of relining. Lower Lane um, was almost ready to collapse. It had vitrified clay, and it had cracks uh, between four main holes. I was looking at that data, and it was just cracked all over the place. And so they were lucky it didn't collapse. Um, so we had some of that work. Uh, Kensington also had some work, but some of them, they they actually reneged on a lot of additional work for both both entities. And I don't know if they've, if they've ever followed up on it. What I'm doing at right now is I'm going back over that data uh, again and looking at it and then um, looking at the uh, situations where we have some purple in our distribution system. And actually, it's kind of funny because I was talking to Mike Kozunowski the other day. We have a pumping station here by uh, by you, um, by your home here. Uh, and he says that this is very, very minor. The, the flows here are, are so low that it's not a problem. So I'm not really sure if we're still getting some uh, leakage in the spec, but this would probably be a good place to double check. Another area right there is Spruce Brook. Uh, this is a long line that goes to Middletown Road. That we know is a potential, uh, although it's you know it's all put the sex section over there by Beckley, uh, coming off uh, over on Route Nine. Uh, that another area it, 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 over here, it's underneath Route Nine, the you know, shoreline. Mm -hmm. um, that apparently isn't as bad either. So, but we'll have to check these things out because this this data I think is still useful. It gives us an idea. I do know. Upson Street, all these streets in here oh, are right. still problematic. They were problematic back in 1936, and they are problematic today. So, so this whole area, I think, is still still a big issue. Uh, and that's something we're going to have to drive home to uh, EPA and deep. Hmm. Um, and I think we showed here mm -hmm. this meter, mm -hmm. this line coming in here. Yeah, is that great line? Excessive. Yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. yeah, there was some too. We have a meter there. No, no, they, no, they, they, they put a meter there. there. They put a meter there. Great find. Study for the. Oh, they yeah. put a. So that'd be Kensington. No, no, no. We, no, we, we, put, we put a meter. Put a meter. Yeah. They hired Cardinal Engineering to put yeah. a meter yeah. there. Yeah. When they, was that put in? 
2016, 15, something in that range. Oh, so it's been around. No, it's oh, a yeah. temporary. It was temporary. Oh, yeah, it temporary. was taken out. Yeah. Temporary. Oh, it's a temporary. Just for the study. For several yeah. Yeah. Right, right. right. Yeah. Just, just to evaluate the flows coming out of that area. The other thing down my neighborhood, uh, Ray, that water table is so freaking high that if they had any small crack in a pipe that's underneath. Yeah, there. but you know what? You got PVC pipe there. It's not like you got vitrified clay or it's about yeah, cement or it's something else, old, RCP. You know, in the vitrified clay, I was surprised too because I was looking at some of the reports that were done when they were doing the camera work for the 1996 data. That vitrified clays, I thought they were four feet, but that's actually three feet. So there's tons of joints in there all over the place. So those things tend to move all over them. And then, um, and then uh, Kensington did some. Uh, um, <laughs> which is funny, what's well, funny to me anyway, uh, they did some work over here by butternut and they found in this area it wasn't even identified as a problem, but yet there, there were so many holes in that line, I couldn't believe it, 2018, 2019, they, they, were, they were putting grout in almost every location there. The, uh, the gentleman that was working there, a friend of mine, basically he says he's never used as much grout in, in, on a project as then. Um, but grout to me uh, means that it's, more temporary than yeah, it is to have like a year life. Maybe. Yeah, a year life. Well, we've got patches that are <laughs> ten years plus. I mean that they patched a long time ago. Oh, doesn't, the yeah, grout doesn't it doesn't cut it. I you know you got to pull a hole here and there maybe that it works, but but when you got this multiple amount of well, you holes, ups and it, all it makes more sense to put a a, 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 a liner in for sure. So, but anyway, it, that's that. So we'll talk about that. Okay, uh, I, I don't know if you have any questions on that. And uh, uh, 4.7, I'm going to be on vacation on, on the next month. So definitely, um, I won't be here. I don't know if, uh, if we want to schedule something separately. We'll have to see if there's any re real reason to schedule, a, 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 what do you call it, um, another meeting. So, or just wait till November. November, I'm going to be out on the day of the. the yeah, 20th, so I don't know if we 26th. want to schedule a separate meeting. We could actually separate. We could. You're you're going to be out that same day. The so surgery is surgery. the 26th. Yeah, we we might be able to November. split the hair and have an early one in November as a special session if we need to. If there's a need, I, and I'm not sure that there is one right now. Do you but have much on your agenda. Oh, well, I I don't know that until later, so I don't really know. It may be packed. I don't know. We'll see. See, we'll, see. Well, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because we have to talk about what uh, Deep might might not do. Oh, Meriden. Now, four point eight. Now, um, um, I'm also doing a project. This is a water project. Now, um, basically, uh, we have a tank down at the lower end of our distribution system called Lamentation Tank, in the southern section. When we had that tank painted exterior-wise, we found out uh, the hard way. Uh, the material that we were supposed to use for the exterior paint was to be, was supposed to be able to be put on place with the tank full. Well, we found out that it doesn't work that way. Uh, we had a uh, um, firm, Burke Tank, it was out of, uh, out of Atlanta. I forget the name of the company, but anyway, it's a big company. They came in, covered the entire tank. It's a two million gallon tank. Covered it, put in two big uh, dehumidifiers. And couldn't keep couldn't keep up with it. So what they did is then lowered the tank. When we lowered the tank, we found out that we couldn't keep up with our well system in that area to, to supply enough water. We would put the wells on 24 hours a day, and it was still wasn't enough. It, but it, it got us through just enough so that they were able to finish painting it in the fall. Uh, they started it in May, and because of the temperature and whatever problems, they, they just couldn't do it. So um, I had. Um, uh, Leonard now Haley Ward uh, look at this hydraulics and, and such that it and this was scheduled long long time ago is to make a connection to Marriott and along the Berlin Turnpike North Colony Road um, by um, uh, Silver Island Way. There's a little peninsula out there that's technically Berlin, but that's being served by Marriott and, and Marriott has a 12 inch line at that location. So what we're looking at is having a connection from that line to all the way down to your, your street, uh, Worthington Point, Point uh, to, to, to connect with the 12 inch there. Uh, this would run a parallel because right now, instead of having 
was proposed 24 inch that was done years ago, which never happened. Uh, all we have is an eight inch going from that point on to Canoe Birch Apartments, which is right off of the turnoff uh, to go on to North Colony Road. So the 12 inch means we would get water from Meriden. We would actually uh, purchase water from Meriden for a period of time during the summer to drain our tank and repair the corrosion that's in it. We've had two co two companies come in, Cortec, Underwater Solutions, evaluate the tank interior. Uh, it does need to have work done on it. We, we're not in the position of replacing the tank, um, which is which would be an astronomical fee cost. We're thinking it probably in the vicinity of three to four million bucks. So that's not gonna happen. So basically we're gonna try to take the tank out of service for that period of time and then that would be in 2026. In 2025, we would have construction from uh, um, uh, what do you call it, from that, uh, along the Berlin Turnpike to Meriden and make the connection. Well, I had this all worked out with Rich Mesko, the director over at the Middletown, and then he retired. So, uh, excuse me, Middletown, Meriden. So basically, what we're going to do now is um, start over again. Oh, uh, try to get an agreement with them. Uh, in, in to, yeah, to do they that. Can't, they, they can't step well, in. we have a design, uh, Haley Ward designed the system already. We were looking for a DWSRF loan. Uh, the gentleman that helped me out on the previous loan on the Berlin Turnpike, the main replacement is doing it, uh, Raul Tahida. He's helping me out with this. Um, Raul used to work for me, so he's trying, trying to do a pretty good job trying to get all this done. And then basically, uh, if we can get that connection done, we can then work on taking that out of, and now we're not gonna need a pump, which is great because the hydraulic gradient is such that we can potentially use their water without it. They, if wanted to purchase water from us, would need a pump going in reverse and, and take from our system. Um, we're also looking for another interconnect with Cromwell, so actually we could purchase enough water. We also have an interconnect with, uh, with MDC. So water could pass through us if it, if, it, if Merida needed it, so we could pass it out to them for, for a fee. So it does have value on a long-term basis as well. But the big part uh, is is to improve the storage tank and get that corrosion out of there and then uh, so we can repair it. Question. Yes, sir. We're, we're going from Meriden with a 12-inch line through there, right? Meriden has a 12-inch line. They have a 12-inch. Yeah. We're connecting with the 12-inch? Correct. We're getting rid of the eight inch. No, eight's no, the eight, but the eight is going to run parallel. The eight, the twelve is going to be a direct connect to 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 basically the fillable tank. So there's, there's no, there's no. It's easier to put in too because there's not going to be any service lines off there. It's going to be just just the pipe I from see. one end to the so other. So that's why we're no we're, service lines. We could tie right into the. We eight were lucky inch. on the Berlin Turnpike because we only had three service connections, so it wasn't a big deal. So, uh, but when you have a multiple service connections off there, that becomes a little bit more complicated. So, uh, and okay. not that it's not doable, but it didn't make any sense it's not to get quicker. Not yeah, and I didn't want cheaper. to abandon the eight inch. The eight inch is still pretty good. And so, you know, if it were cast iron, I would think about it a little bit differently, but not, not ductile iron. And have you made overtures to Meriden with the replacement? Maybe? Yeah, uh, we've made overtures, but it, there's a gentleman there that, really he's not in the position of authority so uh, we're, we're talking to him because we want to get a copy of the they, they have a regional water agreement um and uh, i reached out to regional water to, today to see if they have the agreement meriden can't find the agreement so i'm looking at um, reaching out to regional to, to see if they can have an agreement so that we can have it as a template to, to use in our case because um they get water on, on a seasonal basis with regional whatever they needed. Uh, I think from the Cheshire well field uh, in the Cheshire area. So we're we're back to square one on this whole thing. Pretty much, uh, unless. Uh, How about uh, the engineering? The part only of problem it? is, uh, Rich Mesco was familiar with the project. He, he was anxious to have it. it. It served him well as it served us well. Now I got to start over, and then I've also got to uh, start with this indiv a new individual. Plus, I think uh, pretty much. You need to go to their board or town council to well, for approve. I'm worried about well. the engineering. Remember, we had to. The engineering's already been designed. designed. So they're not going. They'll accept that. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't see a problem with that. So the only just problem is the, the agreement, and then I I don't want to put a pipe in the ground yeah. until I know I have an agreement. Sure. The design is one thing. I mean, if we could, you could always shelve the design. 
do it later. Or so what? What's our time frame? What I'd like to do is have that uh, agreement in place by the end of this year, and construction and going out to bid the uh, first of the year, so that the construction takes place in early spring. So we can take I the tank it, offline. I think it'd be a quick construction period too, probably a month, month and a half. So we could take the the tank offline this summer. No, no, no. That would be the following year. And you, I wouldn't do that. This summer coming up. Is yeah, this summer so would be we're in the this middle, summer would be the, the fall, connection to Meriden, not not the tank. Okay. The so tank has to be the tank has to be taken out of place during the summer months, right? Because That's you can't I, because of the temperature problems right. with the tank. Go You're not going to do it from anywhere from before May and then probably not after October. So your window of opportunity is very low. I don't know. I I can't believe my construction period is going to it could run over. It could you know take a little longer. Like the Berlin Turnpike one, I mean that they basically did most of it in a month and a half, but but then it's, some of it required another month or so. So how many feet of height? Two thousand feet, basically. Well, that's the same as the Berlin Turnpike. No, that was three thousand. Three thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a month, a month and a half. Yeah, I think about that, and I have to do it. Depends on where um, it is. You can go in without without connection. So. Okay. Yeah, the only problem there, uh, it, it's on the side of the road where um, it's on the west side of the road. Where there's a gas mine, and then that gas line is a little bit of concern. Whereas on the opposite side is the uh, the uh, what do you call it the uh, uh, filter fiber optics, which is something you don't want to touch. <laughs> That's fifty thousand dollars an hour or something like that for for that being out of service. The gas line, though, no, you know you don't want to hit that either. So that's another problem. Okay. So more to come. We'll see how if we can get an agreement on hand. Uh, uh, an item five, old business, Deming Road, a pump station. That's about 95% done. Uh, I looked at it really nice. Uh, they've still got some paving, <coughs> some fencing to do, some riprap to finish up, some site work. Most of the instrumentation is done. It's currently running. Uh, also, uh, basically, um, uh, the only thing is we, we we don't have the doors yet. We have the doors to the building. Uh, the building was built in place, so it, it, it's a very nice facility. I think um, when it gets done, we'll all go down there and take a look at it and see uh, firsthand. This this um, this replaces a pit that was in confined space. That was really a critical thing because the guys had to go down there, I don't know, maybe ten, 10 times a month to go down there and to clean out the pumps. And the pumps were off off center from the hole that you have to climb down there. It's like 25 feet. And, and they were all centered, so it made it very, very physically difficult to, to, to work down in there. It was always something that bothered me a lot, so they're not going to have to do that. Did um, they pull the bypass yet? No, the bypass is not functioning. The, the, the pumps are functioning the way they're supposed to be functioning. Okay, so they haven't Yeah, the bypass is not necessary yet. No, I'm saying... Oh, I mean, it's physically there. It's still, it's still there. physically yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when it's ready, we'll let everybody know. And then the last item, uh, just to just to touch base and to give you a little bit more detail about the meeting we had, uh, I think we're going to go to executive session. Make a motion to go to executive session. So, so uh, stop recording. Uh, let's let's get the motion out of the way. And Sebi, uh, in favor. Sebi. Okay. Sebi, are you on there? Sebi? Who made the motion to go to Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, we're going into executive session. I'm going to have to ask you to step off or step out. Okay. Have a good Thanks, one. Thanks, sir. We're looking forward to having you next month yeah. or the month after. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, Sebi. Yep. All right. Thanks, Sebi. Bye. Bye. We're going to go play golf. I'm going to pass out a couple more things for you guys, just as an FYI. You've seen this before, but uh, and this is a flow data from Roland from the Matabasa. This is.